So there's nothing like eating falafel and kakab simsim in a Jerusalem alleyway. Right here. Hey guys, it's me Blanche and welcome back to Feast in the Middle East. I have one last video to share from my previous trip to Jerusalem. And this time I have two treats to share with you. One is a rare inside look at the Al-Aqsa Mosque, as well as a tour inside of one of Jerusalem's beloved bakeries that has been making their iconic bread for over 60 years. <laughs> In the early morning hours, the smell of chewy oblong bread rings loaded with fragrant sesame seeds fill the streets of Jerusalem. Palestinians think of this gakab simsim, or sesame bread, as the essence of Palestine. This is traditional sesame bread, or what we call kaik. This is a 100% Jerusalemite thing. You can get it elsewhere, it never tastes the same. Even if the same baker goes outside the city, it doesn't taste the same. They're still doing old style. Olive wood logs are thrown inside. He will prepare this, which is bread with sesame. It has a little bit of sugar in it. Okay. And the aroma of the olive wood has a huge effect on the tasting. So, good duck. Okay. There are three distinct bakeries in Jerusalem that make this specialty bread, and bakers start preparing these loaves at three or four in the morning. Now, of course, you can't have this bread without Palestinian falafel, and conveniently, there was a shop churning out these crispy, chewy nuggets at light speed just a few steps away. Put the falafel and sesame bread together, and it's absolute magic. The proper way to eat falafel from a true Jerusalem What is that? Um, that's falafel? Oh, you and it's bread. Spread it out. Yep. And and falafel inside. You, of course. All right. What do you think? Looks like white. Stuff, so. And the hummus? Ah. There's nothing like eating falafel and kakab simsim in a Jerusalem alleyway. Right here. Mm. Mm. Oh, it's mm, truly so delicious. light as air falafel. The bread is unmatched. It's got that special flavor from the wood oven, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Snack on the go in Jerusalem. This is, you have to eat this if you're here. Must. <laughs> As I was walking around the streets on my carb-fueled high, I didn't realize how dramatically things would change for this bakery a few months later. Now, since I've returned from this trip, sadly, one of these three bakeries in the heart of Old Jerusalem has been forced to close. After feasting on Jerusalem bread, we headed off to Al-Aqsa, which is the name of the silver-domed mosque inside the 35-acre compound referred to as Al-Harm al-Sharif, or the Noble Sanctuary by Muslims. The Noble Sanctuary hosts Islam's third holiest site, the Al-Aqsa Mosque, and the Dome of the Rock, a 7th century structure believed to be where the Prophet Muhammad ascended into heaven. The average tourist can't get into Al-Aqsa Mosque. You have to get permission from the Islamic Trust. And the way you can do that is if you're a member of the media, uh, educational institutions, as well as local churches, it is worth your while to get those permissions so that you can enter and uh, appreciate the gloriousness of this mosque from within. So I feel really fortunate to be here. This is my first time here. The interior is decorated with Arabic script with written names for God, as well as rosettes and arabesque designs. It has 45 columns, 33 of which are made with white Carrara marble, and 12 are made of stone. 
The dome itself is 25 meters high and covered with gold. The interior is decorated with mosaic, marble, and verses from the Quran. The architecture is regarded as a masterpiece due to the mathematical rhythm of its proportions. So check this out, I'm walking by these columns. These columns are all in the basilica style, these marble columns, because they're actually gifted uh, from Italy by Mussolini at the time. So it's very reminiscent of basilica type architecture here inside. The rock, or sahra, underneath the dome is the highest point in the noble sanctuary. It stands about five feet above the floor and beneath it is a cave where people can pray. So now we're going to enter downstairs and this is actually the rock here, the dome of the rock where uh, this whole foundation is built upon. This cave has been called the Well of Souls, as some believe this is where the souls of the dead gather to wait for the event of Judgment Day. Now Jews believe the compound is where the biblical Jewish temples once stood, but Jewish law forbids Jews from entering the compound and praying there as it's considered too holy to enter. But rising temple movements like the Temple Mount Faithful and the Temple Institute have challenged this notion to enter the compound and they aim to rebuild the third Jewish temple here. Such groups are funded by members of the Israeli government as well as Christian Zionist groups that want the third temple built to bring on the end times. Because of its importance to both Jews and Muslims, the Dome of the Rock area is a highly contested religious site. Indeed, just outside the mosque, Israeli merchants sell posters, paintings, and t-shirts depicting the Jerusalem landscape with the third temple erected in the place of the Al-Aqsa compound, with the mosque nowhere to be seen. And here, narrative is very, very important, politically speaking. If you listen to the Israeli side, and if you have an Israeli guide guiding you around, you will say, this is the Aqsa Mosque, which is holy for Muslim. Dome of the Rock is not. That's what they say. Yes, yes. Of course. And most of the Palestinians and the Muslims and the Christians believe this is part of a long plan in the future to rebuild the third temple in the place of the Dome of the Rock. So historically, from 1994 till now, most of the flare-up and violence that has happened here, the spark was here. Okay. Including 2000, when Ariel Sharon came here with 3,000 soldiers, in a message of peace for 10 minutes. Okay. Ended up with 3,000 people being dead. 1994, digging of the tunnels underneath the foundations. And up till last year, the attempt to change status quo, status quo here, is always a problem. So we have an institute in Jerusalem on the Israeli side, and you can visit it. It's called the Third Temple Institute. The Third Temple Institute is an institute that has prepared everything for the Third Temple to be built, where the two previous two were built once upon a time, which is basically somewhere around the vicinity of the Dome of the Rock. In Judaism, if you come and ask a religious Jew, would you want the Third Temple? So yes. It's up to God when and how. The radicals, including this institute and others, they say we're going to help God make that happen. Speaking of these radicals, during our visit to the mosque, we actually saw these very extremists that the tour guide told us about, encircling the compound several times. <laughs> 